Hi, this is the uh, 2004 4.2 Audi A8L that I've made a couple videos about. I've been battling a uh, some codes on the Bank One passenger side camshaft actuator for a while now. If, if you watched my earlier video, we replaced the uh, solenoid for, I believe it was a P0012 code which went away and uh, shortly after I started getting a P0011 code for uh, intake camshaft actuator retarded and it wasn't moving the camshaft actuator. I was actually applying 12 volts to that solenoid and you couldn't hear the uh, camshaft rotating in there. So uh, tried a couple things, thought the timing might be off, checked that, everything was good. Um, the actuator sits, this is the new one, it actually sits in between, like here, and I'll do another short video to kind of show you everything together, but uh, anyway, I'll try not to spill these bolts here, but here's what the actuator should look like, is if you can see, there's a uh, tiny screen in there, in the oil passage, and uh, I'm going to try to pull this out of here. But as you can see on this side, the screen is completely, I'm thinking it's actually inside. And I'm thinking it's jamming up the little passageway. So I'm gonna try to pull this out here. Yep, as you can see, there's like a piece of the screen that somehow broke and it's stuck inside there. So I think I finally found my culprit there. The guides actually look pretty good on here. They are uh, a little worn, but nothing crazy like some of them I've seen where they've worn in into the like metal part there. So uh, yeah, like I said, this wasn't a video on how to do this, but this is kind of just a video on what I found for my uh, P0011 code here. So. All right, I'm going back together with this. I've got both camshafts in here. When you do this, you want to make sure, I don't know if you can see this, but on the back right here, there's a uh, little arrow. And if you can see down in there, you can kind of more feel it. There's a little groove in the cam and that has to line up with that. And then there's one for the exhaust cam as well. So we've got both of those lined up with the arrows, the tensioners and the up positions so it holds the chain tight on that side. And then I've got my bar in between here. So I only did this one side, but so there's no keyway on this camshaft here. This uh, sprocket is just loose. So it's like press fit onto there so I put a mark on here when I took it off. So I put the mark back on. Both camshafts are lined up with the bar. And then uh, I've got the new tensioner installed. And the main thing I did want to point out, I've seen a lot of videos on here about uh, taking the whole bumper and everything off. And I chose to leave it on. I think it made it a little, a little bit tighter. But if you've ever had one of these bumpers off, all the uh, plastic and everything is very fragile. And uh, the main thing I've fought is these... Uh, headlight washers on here the the line for that is uh run all through the bumper and i would just assume not mess with that because every time i've had to do anything with the bumper the headlight washer line always ends up breaking or starts leaking later but uh yeah this can be done it's a pretty tight fit as you can see with uh these audis as far forward as the engine is you don't have a lot of room but i was still able to get the uh harmonic balancer off just with a uh Allen wrench. I think it's an eight millimeter or something. And yeah, I've got the bar in there. I held the, uh, this timing belt had already been done. So I didn't, uh, chose not to go ahead and replace it. It only had like 10,000 miles on it. But anyway, I just strapped it down there on the crankshaft with a uh, zip tie, as you can see, and it should all stay in time that way. All right. We are, uh, under the engine here and I wanted to show the other piece to this is putting the engine in the service position. And 
that involves these hoses here. You have to pull the bracket down out of the way. You can see it moving back up there. But there's a pin that actually goes, I don't know if you can see it right, right there. There's a pin that actually locks the crankshaft to the block. And in order to get to that, there's a uh, eight millimeter Allen plug. And I know it's hard to see, but it is back up in there. And that holds the crank at top dead center. And when you are putting it in service position, the crank can be 180 out. And how you ensure that it's not 180 out is with this cam locking bar here, the inside bolts or the inside holes are the bigger ones and the outer one is smaller and it's not much difference, but if you've got both the bigger holes on the inside, that's how you know you're on top dead center as well as having that lobe on the number one cylinder at top position there. So it's like basically 180 degrees from the lifters themselves. All right, I got everything all buttoned back up here. I cleared the codes out, engine's running super smooth now and uh, I noticed on uh, cold start before it would puff out a little bit of a uh, smoke like the valves were overlapping or whatnot and uh, see it's uh, up to operating temperature no check engine light and uh, I'm gonna go take it for a drive I think we fixed this one thanks for watching